if they have some other business they want to run out of that house in a in a fundamentally small way then the zoning board of appeals and the, and the zones uh, the uh, the town of Cape Elizabeth doesn't have an objection to it when in fact they build a business and try to attach it to a house which is exactly what they've told us they've done then they've circumvented the zoning rules and they have come before you and said fait accompli look this is an attachment we have a business that means we meet the rules that seems to me the backwards way of looking at it what you should be looking at is this is a house where we live we want to put we want to in our dwelling unit where we live put uh, a, a business a small business that's not what's happened here it's, it's gone the exact opposite direction and that's our objection I mean it, it's fairly clear well, the, only, the only question really is whether that whether what they have done and they've been very open about their intention and their objectives the only question is what they have done has it violated anything in the zoning regulations and I'm that's what I'm wrestling with. And I agree and we think it has and we think it has because it is not an attached building it's a separate building four separate walls separate heating separate plumbing it, it is completely separate from See, I, I don't take that per se as a as I said I'm familiar with many situations where you have uh, a home made up of separate buildings but if in fact a home was made up in separate of separate buildings in the town of Cape Elizabeth you could not put in the appurtenant building a business it had to be in a dwelling unit we don't have any objection to the business in the dwelling unit it's you understand what I'm saying no, but the question though we come back to this word attached or detached correct and what I'm saying is you are exactly correct there are places in Maine where there are separate buildings and people live in those separate buildings that those separate buildings couldn't be used for in under our zoning ordinance for a uh, a business it had to See, be one, one could make the case one could make the case that they she needs she felt she needed more space for business so she had two choices one one to enlarge the primary building and, and make it much more of a Goliath kind of a building which would have taken away from the aesthetics of it a uh, second to build an attached building which looked like a barn and preserve the aesthetic character of the residence and satisfied functional objectives as well I think you can make that case I don't think that's what happened here but you could definitely make that case and so you know thing the thing that we're wrestling with is the law does not define what attachment is you know I mean could it be something as simple as a clothesline could it be something as simple as a as a paving stone walkway between the two structures? There's been some discussion that that's already been accepted in some cases that a paving stone walkway between two buildings makes them attached. I didn't know if that was. Did you say that, Mr. Smith, that the paved stone walkway was enough to, for an attachment? No. I didn't think so. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. that. That is certainly the issue that we're dealing with. That's the issue that you're dealing with because you're going to make the decision. Um, I think clearly in this case there is not these are two different buildings and they are not attached within the meaning of the zoning ordinance okay. I, I, I feel I've used too much time so I'll okay let someone else ask questions here anybody else that I can answer questions for <coughs> earlier I'm sorry. Go ahead. earlier you gave an example uh, in your neighborhood where a detached garage was connected with a heated walkway Correct. I didn't hear your conclusion. Did, do you feel like that is now an attached garage? Yes. Attached structure? Yes. I think that they're now uh, they're sharing common spaces. The definition of a uh, of a uh, accessory structure is a detached subordinate building, and it lists something like garage, a greenhouse, and a home workshop. Um, this is not. This is a detached subordinate building. It is not. The main living space it, that's it's clearly an accessory structure but you you do feel that the gr the garage became attached I do was do you feel that it's just for your interpret I want to hear your interpretation that walking outside is that how does that bear upon attached versus detached well I think walking outside in this fashion where there's a significant uh, distance between the two buildings makes a big difference I'm not talking about in this instance I'm talking about in general if you walk <coughs> out into the environment 
how, what bearing do you feel like that has on, on attachment? I think it depends on the distance between the, the two buildings and exactly what you're walking out into. I mean, as, as the chairman said, a breezeway may be an attachment. Uh, it would depend, I think, on a case-by-case -case basis as you viewed it. Uh, if you were walking out uh, along a stone path, uh, you know, 50 to 100 feet to another building, I think that's clearly a detached building. If you're walking 15 feet between uh, your back door and the garage door in a covered breezeway, it's probably an attachment. With, with a roof and the, in the gutters and all the other things that come with a breezeway. <coughs> I think there was another question of distance, sir. Yes, I did. Um, getting aside from buildings being attached, I'm not an attorney. If the home business, uh, would it be an objection if the business increased in volume? Absolutely. Or size? Okay. Yeah, there would be a significant objection because uh, that would be the concern that we're basically taking 221 square feet, turning it into 854 square feet. Uh, we, I don't know how many people are working there. I understand there was one other person. There may, and the, Mr. Banner will have to to address this. There may be another person who does bookkeeping or something like that there. I don't know. But if there is an expansion of the business because of the expanded space, then there's a totally new issue, and we don't get to review that again. I mean, that's uh, we're left with a decision of the board that now a, a small business run out of the home has become a business in a fairly substantial barn, 2,000 square feet. Uh, with uh, the, the chance to expand and, and, and grow substantially as you wouldn't be able to do inside the dwelling unit. So yeah, that would be a concern. Thank you. you do realize that a home business can have no more than one employee outside of the family members? Yes. I do, from the definition of the home right. business. Very much limits the growth. It limits the growth uh, from a uh, from a uh, regulation standpoint, yes. Mr. Bannon, uh, um, we, we could stay here all night and we, we still aren't going to be able to cut this baby in half. Uh, can, can you, given the fact that there is the pre existing business here uh, that has been in existence for uh, close to two years now, I guess, a year and a half, um, and Additional use was granted appropriately at that time. Um, can you shed some light for, for me as to what's motivating this uh, the objection here? Well, uh, and I, I think actually I'd let, let my clients tell you exactly what's motivating is since they live next door to it. I think it'd be easier for them to address those questions than me. Um, and uh, they're chomping at the bit to talk, so I think I'll let them do that as well as the neighbors if, if that's all right with you, Mr. Chairman. Well, um, if if the board members don't mind, um, I'd like I mean, I'd like to stick with the attachment issue and resolve that um, before we get on to the issue of whether you know what objections they might have to expanding the business or moving it to a separate building. Mr. Chairman, if, if I yes. may, um, I don't mean to to derail that line of thinking, but I guess, again, not being an attorney, the argument on what constitutes a building, uh, I think is gonna go circle round and round and round. I think if we look at the ordinance, um, the granting of doing home business, whether the building is a, a attached or not, is a, it's a granted permission, it's almost a privilege. And there are certain criteria that have to be met for that. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's an easier road to go down at this point than trying to well find it. it's it, the the business is a conditional use in the RA zone they're entitled to their business with a conditional use permit in the home they have that right the question is can they move the business to this other structure if it's attached they can if it's accessory they can't um, so before we get into any discussions about why the business is there, or what the objections might be, they're already running the business out of the house. That's okay. Um, whether there are objections to that or not is 
I think it's inconsequential to this evening's discussion. So I, maybe we've heard all we need to hear and we're ready to discuss and vote on whether it's attached or not. Because it is something that we can talk about circularly and we don't need to do that. We don't need to sit here until 1030 debating whether it's attached or not. I think we've got the definitions in front of us. I think we've heard whether it is or isn't um, from council. Um, not entirely. <laughs> um, but you, you gave us your presentation for the most part. We'll give you a few minutes to respond if you'd like. But I think we're probably ready to go ahead and resolve that issue. I would hope. So can we move on and get that done? Okay, Mr. Brogan, anything more from Not you on the attachment you have issue? More questions or, or about attachment or concerns? It, no. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bannon. We're going to limit the discussion to the attachment issue and. And no new, no new stuff. Just a response to whatever Mr. Brogan may have raised um, well, in your I, initial presentation. Yes, I have a treat for the board. I'm going to stop speaking, and uh, I'm going to have my clients show you what's in the building. Uh, there's been a lot of talk here about or uh, effort to circumvent this or that, or whether it's actually a habitation or not. Let's just take a few minutes to run through what this thing is so we know what the animal is that we're talking about because it's been described uh, rather differently from what it is. If, if you would come up to the microphone and describe for us. Downstairs is a library. This is a picture of the library. It's a beautiful room. I collect books. I've collected books for years, children's books, all kinds of books. Um, this is a view from the road. This is the middle room. There are three rooms. There's a storage room, a library, and a middle room where we do whatever, crafts, or whatever. So it is a living space on the bottom of the, the bottom of this building. The, up, the upstairs, which we've never tried to hide, is what I wanted to use as a studio. And it's a big open room. I have a computer, and when I, when I have help, which is not all the time, um, the other woman works on the other computer. There's two computers, and I have a personal computer. That's it. And then there's a big round table, which you see here. And it's a beautiful, aesthetically, you know, a beautiful space, and we were very careful to make it look so. This is the attachment from the house, um, which has been argued up one side and down the other. I do want to say, this is my only chance to speak, that if we have to attach it more to please the board, we probably will. So I think you do have a certain obligation to tell us what is it, what, what is it that will make it attached? Because we felt that this was substantial and Bruce conferred, and we went to considerable expense to build this attachment. Um, this is what it looks like. They are separate structures. As you said, there are lots of houses that are built with separate buildings, and, um, but it is attached in a in a very uh, sturdy way. It's not just a flimsy, uh, flimsy catwalk. So I just wanted you to understand that in contradiction to what you said, is that it's the upstairs where I work, and I have so little impact. I design. I'm a designer. I design Stonewall kitchen brochures. I design calendars. I don't impact anybody. I mean, I, I, if I do this in my in the room I'm in now, or I do it in the barn, it's the same impact, you know, because it's a, it's a cerebral thing, what I do. I don't have catalogs delivered there. Everything is discs or sent by email. It's a very high-tech world now. There's not like I have catalogs printed and the shipments come to the, to the structure. They do not. They do not. It's strictly a virtual business in that regard. I sell my talent as a designer. Good. Actually, I have a question for you. <clears throat> it was stated earlier that you could only... Um, a question for me or for Leslie? For Leslie, please. Okay. It was stated earlier that um, you could only leave the library by going up through the studio. That doesn't seem to be accurate. That's not correct. There's another door. There's another door um, that goes into the like, courtyard, and I use that door a lot. It's not on this picture. Okay. <laughs> 
Why don't you guys do this? From the <laughs> bottom house. floor, right here, there's this a door. View. It's a central door, like a house. And um, you can either go into the building from here or across the catwalk. When it's cold, obviously, I go across the catwalk. In the summer, I would probably use this door much more. There's also a big barn door on the side, um, on the end, which, is you, which you can use, which is clumsier to use, so we don't use that don't that much. <laughs> This is a large uh, barn. Thank you. Are there any other questions for There are no other questions. Ronald, did you want to add anything else? I would like to say something, actually. I feel, <coughs> since uh, these are my neighbors that are here as well, that it's important that I respond to some of the allegations that were made here about uh, Excuse me, can can he introduce himself, please? I'm Ronnie Sellers. I'm okay, thank you. A co-owner of this property. Uh, uh, the uh, allegation was made that there was some attempt to uh, circumvent the regulations or the ordinances and I really want to set the record straight because this is my character uh, that's on the line here. Uh, the opposite is true. Leslie and I have made every effort all the way along the line to make sure that we were complying with the ordinances. Uh, John made mention of how much we had to invest to make this happen. Certainly, uh, we did know before we went forward that part of what we wanted to do with the structure was uh, move Leslie's business into the top floor of it. We also wanted to use the bottom floor for personal reasons. We collect a lot of books. We have uh, a library is something that is an important part of our lives. And a library is an important part of our living space. Uh, so it, it is a very primary use for us. To, to have that library in that structure, to have it be large enough so that it will accommodate all of our books. Uh, and I feel confident that uh, CEO Smith would uh, attest to the fact that we've been totally out front all the way along the line and above board about what we were trying to do. Uh, from a financial standpoint, I wanted to make sure that before we went forward with investing all this money, that we were going to be able to do what we wanted to do in the structure. And, uh, and I, when we got to the point where we felt that uh, we had covered everything from a legal standpoint, the standpoint of permits, etc., uh, we went forward. I also want to make the point that uh, our neighbors did have the opportunity to complain uh, we, we honestly had no idea that they had any objection to what we were about to do. We had been very open with them about it uh, all the way along. And uh, had, if they had complained within the time frame, within that 30-day time frame, then uh, I'm not sure where it would have gone from there because we would have known that they had an issue with it. And uh, if nothing else, we would have talked about it. Uh, the reason these, I assume that these 30 day periods exist uh, is you know, on one hand to offer neighbors the opportunity to complain. The other hand, it protects people who are about to make an investment from uh, going forward with that investment in the event that there is some kind of substantial objection or complaint. That didn't happen. We did go forward. We were in close contact with the code enforcement officer and uh, the project was completed. And it wasn't really until it was completed that we learned formally that uh, our neighbors had a problem with it. Okay, 
Well, I think we've heard all we're going to hear about the attachment issue. So um, why, don't, um, why don't we as a board, without necessarily closing public discussion, take up the attachment issue based on what we've heard, um, make a determination whether it's attached or not? I would like to just briefly comment. Um, what you see at this location with that kind of an attachment is not unlike the calls that I've made as a code officer in four towns over, over the past 14 years. If, if a house is attached to a garage, whether it's habitable for living or not, by some kind of attachment, whether it be an open breezeway, open to the weather with a roof, or, or something that's more substantial as, as heated, once that attachment is made, I consider that as, as one structure for the purposes of setbacks and for the purposes of anything else that may, may have to arise after that. Uh, I can only think of one instance, and I'll pass this out. I know there's a lot of other ones, but this is recently. Uh, it was a shoreland zoning issue with Dan Caputo down on uh, Lawson Road. Uh, not the same kind of an issue as a home business, but certainly uh, important in, in the fact that, that under shoreland zoning within 75 feet of the high water mark, if, it, if it's a non-conforming building, you can only expand 30%. That particular case, I included, I, I allowed the, the garage breezeway attachment, which is an open attachment. I got another one here. To be, to be considered as one structure for the purposes of the 30% expansion to occur either in the house or as a whole, rather than considering the two structures as separate structures and meaning that you only could have 30% expansion of the garage, 30% of the main building. So there is precedent, from, from my office at least, and to the extent that I consider any kind of an attachment that requires a building permit, which maybe a walkway wouldn't, field stone or, or the like, anything that requires a building permit, I consider once that is attached with a structure, that it becomes one structure for the purposes of zoning. Um, and that's, that's something that, that, that I've done in, in the 14 years that I've been a code officer. That's all I want to say. And, and Bruce, a building permit is required when there is a structural alteration. Is that the, the key definition? A structural addition or a structural alteration. Um, a change means e egress. Uh, would be another building permit that would be required. Um, if, it do, if it doesn't meet the de definition of a structure, then it doesn't require a building permit. So I, I just want to touch upon the, f the reason why I consider, or how I consider an accessory building compared to a regular building. And, and I just, re you know, if I, if I take the definition of accessory building a structure, to me it's pretty simple. It says detached. And if you replace the word detached with not joined or connected, then it's an accessory structure. It's as simple as that in my book. Um, and that's the only issue I have, that, that, that it, the accessory building structure does not meet the definition of a detached in this particular case. It, it is attached because it's connected. Uh, and that's, that's all I need to say. Thanks. Mr. Smith, I have a question for you as well. Had, had that walkway not been constructed when the barn was, and they wished to construct it at a later time, they would have needed a building permit? To That's do correct. It. And after that, subsequent to building the walkway, it would be considered attached in the barn. Everything else would fall within the setback requirements. That's correct. We don't, we don't have a distinction between accessory buildings and principal buildings for purposes of setbacks anyways. But for purposes of use and other things, we do. But they would be held to the same standard. So That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Uh, yes, of course you can, Mr. Hill. Um, following up on something that Mr. Smith said, uh, in the definition of building any structure, all attached structures such as porches, decks, balconies, carports, and similar structures for which a building permit is required. So 
I, I think that if you're looking for a if you're looking for a bright line as to whether this is attached or not, it I think is within your discretion to say, hey, if it's something that needed to have a building permit uh, between the two buildings, um, that may make it attached. I I view my role in it, in advising the board is to tell you when you have to do something, when you can't do something, and then leaving the things in the middle uh, to your uh, discretion. And if this had been uh, the flagstone walkway that we've talked about, uh, or a brick sidewalk or something like that, I'd tell you that I'd, it would be my opinion that it would not meet the definition of being attached. Um, on the other hand, it would be a real bright line and really easy to say this is attached if there had been an L constructed between the two buildings. It was completely uh, enclosed, roofed, and so forth, and heated. I mean, that's, that's an easy call, too. Um, this seems to me almost, uh, almost directly in the middle. Uh, it's a walkway. It's, it's, it's a beautiful structure, I think. I mean, it's very aesthetically pleasing to, to, to look at the, how they've done that with the trellising and so forth. Uh, that has no legal significance whatsoever. I just want to say that. But um, it, it, it's not, uh, I think reasonable minds could differ as to whether this is attached or not. There are a couple of points at which you can make a uh, decision that gives you uh, some sort of a bright line. One of it might one might be that it's a type of structure that needs to have a building permit in order for you to determine that it is attached. And another could be going all the way to having it be uh, have a roof and being closed. But I, that's that's within your discretion, and I, I really can't be too. Help, I don't feel like I can be too helpful to you. It's, it's your decision to make as to whether this is attached or not. And I, I really think that a court um, uh, would, would likely uphold either way you decide it, because I think reasonable minds could differ on this issue. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Comments from the board? Well, let me weigh in on where I see it. Um, I'm, I think that Dr. Chapman's comments earlier on were fairly persuasive. And I find those comments to be pretty cogent in light of the ordinance's definition of building, uh, which refers to um, all attached structures such as porches, decks, balconies, carports, and similar structures for which a building permit is required ties in with that definition very well. I think that this addition, as we look at it, I think it's subordinate. I think it's inc incidental to the main building, but it seems to be attached. Um, I don't think the ordinance permits us to look at whether or not there was a subterfuge or a pretext or an intent to circumvent the ordinance or would the, it permits us to look at motive. This is not, the ordinance doesn't seem to look at intent. It's a question of is it attached or not? And the way the ordinance is written, maybe, the, maybe this is a loophole that permits it to be attached with a catwalk, but if it is, it is. And as I see it, it's an attachment. Um, and for us to say that it's not attached is going to require that we then give Bruce guidance on what is it going to take to make it attached. And I'm certainly not prepared to draw that definition at this point. I think if we, the ordinance needs to be amended, it's going to have to be done by the town council. So I'm prepared uh, to vote and find that it is, in fact, attached. I concur. And I should say I'm also persuaded by um, Mr. Uh, Bannon's uh, description of the facts of the Town of Union versus Strong case, finding that, that a deck uh, was, in fact, part of 
the principal structure. Other comments? Different views? Anybody want to venture into a motion with a finding to that effect? Do we really need a motion on this? We just go forward. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we could just go forward. I don't think it necessarily needs to be by a separate motion and finding. Okay. If that's the, the sentiment of the board, that it's an attachment, then we ought to simply go forward. Yeah, I, th I think it'd be uh, sufficient just to make that finding. Uh, if, if the board's going to make that finding in its ultimate motion, that's fine. If you want to move on to the next items of the uh, criteria, but I think that that uh, the finding that it's attached should be in, at least you know it should be it's got to be somewhere in your uh, findings of fact and conclusions. Whether you do it now or later, it should be uh, in the decision. Okay. Okay. Well, let's move forward then with the rest of the. Uh, application for a conditional use permit. Uh, I guess I would maybe satisfy what Mr. Hill says um, on this notice. Perhaps we should add mm -hmm. the sentence says, as it stands right now, the appellant seeks a conditional use permit to relocate an existing home business, specifically an office slash studio. I would add on to that comma to an attached building. Within, within an attached building. Within an attached building, yeah. Is is there anything? more that we need to hear on the conditional use by way of evidence, Mr. Hill. Um, it, there probably is. We probably need to hear the description of the business and um, well, uh, even though we've already heard it a couple of years ago, that was in a different context, um, we need to satisfy ourselves that the business is substantially unchanged or if it is changed, how and everybody certainly needs an opportunity to comment on it. Right. I, I think it, it, it's a fairly simple presentation um, for the applicants because you, they already have a conditional use permit, um, and Mr. Bannon could speak, speak to that and then give anybody who objects to it an opportunity to uh, argue why they don't meet the standards uh, in the new um, edition. I, I think a lot of I think a lot of the requirements uh, uh, standards uh, have already been found by this board to, uh, to ha have been met, and uh, unless unless an opponent has um, some new evidence, I think it's this part of it should go fairly quickly. Did, did you hear that, Mr. Bannon? That this part should go fairly quickly. <laughs> the podium is yours. <laughs> Yes, indeed, this board heard this case in uh, 2001, or at least it heard virtually the same case. The question now would be, is there anything different about the fact that Ms. Evans is moving her home business from a 224-square-foot portion of her home to an 864-square-foot portion of her home that would have any impact on the conditional use review criteria? And the answer to that is no. Nothing can change about the neighborhood. It's the same. Uh, nothing can change about the traffic flow in the neighborhood. That's the same. The uh, number of vehicle trips per day that the home business will generate will be two per day. I believe that's what uh, was cited before, but we're allowed to increase it by 2%. Uh, and uh, two trips uh, uh, compared to 300 trips per day on this, uh, on this uh, road is far less than 2%. Um, there will be no noise, there will be nothing in terms of external characteristics any different from what there is now. Um, uh, it's 13 percent of the total square footage of the house, uh, of the dwelling, whereas you can have up to 20 percent. 
There's no sign, there's never been a sign, there never will be one, there will be no outside storage of equipment. Um, uh, there's no change in the sewage treatment. Uh, the site plan is homogenous with adjacent property uses and uh, we've gone to the trouble of getting an appraiser's opinion to show that there wouldn't be any negative impact of this uh, change in location of the business on the, uh, on the uh, neighborhood. So uh, compared with the findings that the board made on March 27th of 2001, uh, it seems as though the evidence uh, before you tonight would mandate the same result. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of the request for a conditional use permit. Uh, we will now hear from anyone who would like to speak in opposition to the request for a conditional use permit. Who would like to speak first? Okay, if you would come up to the microphone, please, and tell us your name and address. Yes, uh, I'm Thomas Mahalik. Uh, I live Sorry, your last Thomas name? Thomas Mahalik. And I live at 18 Angel Point Road. And uh, I've, my wife and I have been fortunate to have all these neighbors around us for the last 25 years. We picked this area to live in. We were fortunate enough to pick a residential area that has somewhat rural characteristics. And we'd like it to stay that way. None of my neighbors have opened up a part-time business at home and none, none of us plan to do so. So we're worried about increased traffic, safety for the children, and we'd like to keep uh, this rural residential area the way it is. And I thank you for my comments. Thank you, sir. Would anyone else like to speak in opposition to the application? And would you please state your name and address? Yes, I will. Thank you. My name is Ann Carney. I live at 139 Two Lights Road, and that's the house that's right next to Ronnie and Leslie's house. Um, the reason that I oppose the application for a conditional use permit is because I feel that um, operating a business uh, in the neighborhood, particularly in this separate um, building, although I understand that you've determined that it's an attached building, but the, the way it's established has a dramatic impact on the privacy of our home. Our lot is a narrow lot that runs from Two Lights Road um, down um, parallel to Ronnie and Leslie's, and it's, it's a, quite a narrow lot. Um, the, our house is sort of oriented backwards so that what we call the front of our house is really away from Two Lights Road. We call the back of our house the part that's near Two Lights Road because we have a backyard and then there's Two Lights Road which has a lot of traffic, particularly in the summer. There's so, it's so heavily trafficked that in fact we don't hang out there very much when previously when we've wanted to have family privacy uh, during the day to spend time with our kids or when our three children who are <coughs> 9, 11, and 13, when they want to go outside and play and have some kind of private play area, they go to what we call our backyard, which is the, um, the non-street side of the house, well, we, we call it the front yard, but it's, it's away from Two Lights Road. It, it was very quiet and private. And now what we have is we, we have a two-story building with a business being operated in the upper floor of that building that looks directly down onto what used to be the only private part of our yard um, that's very close to the setback. It also happens to look directly into our bedroom windows and we feel that that also is an invasion of our privacy. But basically we feel like we've gone from having a very uh, quiet, private front yard to having a front yard which is in view of a business and that is in fact what's happened is that we have a business now overlooking 
the area where our, our kids play and when, where we, if we want to have some quiet time, we go out and garden or just sit there and relax. And, and we, don't, we can't do that now because we feel that, that there's this business overlooking it. Um, I also feel that it does affect the value of our property because instead of having a nice kind of residential feel to the property and to the neighborhood, as Tom Halleck was saying, um, you look at the, the building and even though the bottom floor is being used as a library, to me and it looks like a business building in a residential neighborhood. Um, and so I think it does impact the value of our property as well as directly impacting our privacy. Um, I think the fact that there will occasionally be customers coming into the <coughs> property will make a difference to us um, because, again, we, you know, we're having business people coming into this office that, that overlooks our, our yard and looks into our bedroom. Um, and um, I don't think the uh, site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property when the business, to the extent that it ever was located in the dwelling unit, the main house, and I don't know whether it ever was or not, but, but if it was in there, and we told Ronnie and Leslie this when they came before the board in 2001, that didn't bother us because having a business located within what was and looked like a a family's house didn't really have any impact on us. But when you take it out of that and you build a new structure and put it in the upper story of the new structure overlooking our property, it's not compatible with the residential character of the neighborhood or with the residential use of our property. And that's what our concern is. Um, we also have a concern with the process because it's my understanding that all of this could have been placed before the board before the building started, and we could have all discussed this. And, and um, there would have been some, some mechanism for addressing the project and whether it met these criteria before Ronnie and Leslie invested all the money in the building. And they cho chose to do it afterward, and it put us in a very awkward position, and we feel awkward bringing this appeal before the board because we like to get along with our neighbors and, and um, our kids or friends and that sort of thing, but you know, we feel that we never really had an opportunity to um, address this and, until it got to the point where the project had already been built, and I think the, the ordinance contemplates, and it would have been um, better, I think, if these matters could have been presented to the board before any anything happened on site. It's easier to, to fix these problems before they become big problems rather than doing building first and then and trying to fit the business into the criteria. And I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Questions for Ms. Carney? No, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Ms. Carney. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition to the application for a conditional use permit? Yes, ma'am. And if you would tell us your name and address, please. Sure. I'm Jean Fine, and I'm at 21 Angel Point Road. Um, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a neighbor. <laughs> um, but I, am a, I agree with some of Ann's concerns, but I'm also concerned about setting a precedent in the neighborhood for this kind of an operation. I, I have happen to have an accessory building on my land and I can envision using that or somebody might use it for a business if it's, a, it's permitted and it could be also connected to my house with a catwalk possibly but uh, this is a concern of mine and I don't I wouldn't want to see a number of accessory buildings in our neighborhood being converted into attached living units and used as business. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fine. Anyone else who would like to speak?
Hearing no one else who would like to speak, we will close the public comment portion of the hearing. <coughs> Looking at the items required for the board, one of the uh, well, I should say among the things for the board to consider is whether or not to attach any conditions um, to the approval of a conditional use should we decide uh, to grant it uh, for the new structure. And the ordinance says that the conditions may include but are not limited to such requirements as off-street improvements, access restrictions, hours of use, buffering and screening, utility improvements, and performance guarantees. Um, we considered these various options a couple of years ago, and I think the only condition, did we condition that there could be no signage? Signage, was no sign. Was that the only condition that we imposed, Bruce? I believe so, yes. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't impose conditions this time around. Now, do those same conditions automatically carry forward? Uh, the no signage, do we need to reimpose that? Uh, <clears throat> if you know. Or we can, might be safer just to reimpose it, which is easy enough to do. It's a new conditional use approval. Yeah. So. signage on the what? I'm sorry, what first? You gonna put no signage under one of these conditions or a separate condition? Under one of the generic headings? Uh, what, what are you looking at? That I'm looking at the, the draft on the second page of the draft. Oh, I see. Now, if, if the conditional use is granted, does the conditional use remain in the house? So there will be the ability to use both the house and the new structure no. for the business? Or is this intended to it's supersede the previous conditional use? It's a new conditional use that would stand alone and, and, and it would nullify the prior conditional use. It does do that? It automatically nullifies? I would, I mean, it doesn't say that, but I would say that that's. Um, I, whether it does or doesn't, that's a big if you want to do it. And I think that on page 55 mm -hmm. of the ordinance, duration of a conditional use approval, if you cease to use the property for the approved conditional use for one year or more, I mean, it will automatically terminate if they vacate that space. For a of year. But I think it. But if they don't vacate the space, they could conceivably use both. Right. So I think that you ought to be clear as to whether this replaces. And I, I understand that it, that it does. So. So I guess we, uh, by consent of the applicant, that the earlier. Is, is the earlier approval is terminated? Yeah. Are there any other conditions? Well, let, me that let me ask Mrs. Evans, if I may. Um, your neighbor had some concerns about loss of privacy. I was wondering if there's anything in terms of hours of use or of buffering and screening that um, you might well, do to. I have um, the hours of use is basically nine to six primarily. Um, and she, she should be able to connect to it. Yeah. The hours of use, although irregular, are nine to six. In other words, we don't necessarily go in there every morning at nine. Um, 
as far as um, privacy, I've already been pretty um, sensitive to that and got blinds for the whole building um, so that, you know, when I'm in there, I, I put the blinds down so that I don't um, look out over the yard actually at all. Um, and we do have hemlocks as a screen between the two um, properties. So it's very, um, been very like sensitive to that. And as far as looking into the neighbor's bedroom, it's about 125 feet away. And I don't look into it, I can't look into it. The other thing is that um, I'm just at a computer in that space that I showed you in those photographs. You know, that's that's where I work. I'm looking most. I'm looking out the back, which is uh, into the woods and the, and the hills beyond. So I have already made a considerable investment to get wooden blinds for all the. So uh, nine to six, Monday to Friday, would those be the hours of use? Those are the hours of use. Um, will I not? Go, but I will go go in the library whenever I want to. You know, I mean, do you think for the upstairs? That's when I work, and that's my normal work day. Does that mean I'm not allowed to go in the upstairs? After well, I'm, 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 just ask, I'm asking you to offer something well, yes, to well, help, her, to help yep. show her privacy yep. a little more. Yep. Totally, totally, and that's pretty much what I do now. <clears throat> I mean, we turn off the lights by 5.30, the lights are off in that building, in the upstairs. I'm, are, are you suggesting that, that you limit the operation nine to six? Oh, that's what we're talking about, yeah. Okay. But I, I have no problem with that, except that I'm not sure how that's enforceable. I mean, it isn't as if they got traffic coming in there all hours. I mean, usually it's concerned with traffic coming in and out, lights and, and the light shining on properties. You know, a business that requires people to come and go on a regular basis. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not sure how that's enforceable. If, if there's a light on up there, are they going to call the code off? I'm not asking about enforceable. No, but I, I, I'm, a, I'm asking. To be Mrs. reasonable. Mrs. Connie had some concerns about loss of privacy, both for having company, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what's now her part of her yard that she uses for hosting company and stuff. And I don't, no problem. I just. I'm just trying to find some ways to help. Right. Uh, no, I, I totally agree with that. I totally respect that. I, I realize the enforcement's something that I'm not. Really concerned it. Well, but the minute you limit it to certain hours, then it does become an enforceable issue. I just wanted, I just wanted you to be aware of that. So, it, it does nine, six Monday to Friday fit within your yes. requirements? Yes. I would, I would assume that you're referring to client business. I mean, she can, I would, <clears throat> I would also assume she could go into any portion of any part of her house any time, day or night she wants to. So I assume we're talking about client visits. Right. Is that oh, correct? I don't, client visitors or client business? Client visitors. Oh, client absolutely, visits. there would not be. And I'm, I'm trying to clarify what I interpret his question to be. I was talking about the hours that part of her house is used for business is actually <coughs> any way whatsoever by someone whose presence might affect the privacy of the neighbor. Which would either be her assistant or, or her. a client. Or her. Or her. I, I would think she could go into any por portion of her house anytime she wanted to, day or night. Uh, I think she can too. I'm, I'm asking her to be sympathetic to the... Mm -hmm loss of privacy of her neighbor and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think she already has. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and it's a very quiet place. <laughs> it's not. Uh, well, I, I don't mean to belabor this, but I, I, I got to know if that's a condition of the approval or it's just a suggestion because that's important whether it's put in there or not. And that's <clears throat> what I need to know. I think it was a suggestion that she's volunteered to. To it. It, it seems a little silly for us to Chasing impose a condition mm -hmm. that we can't enforce. Um, <coughs> and if you want to go up, I don't want to feel. If you want to go up to your office at eight o'clock in the right. evening to turn on the computer, it seems to me that you ought to be allowed right. to do that. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely. I just had a question 
there is a sensitivity to, for, to traffic in that area, from what I understand. And I was just curious, um, not knowing how the access is to that building, do you have a separate driveway for that building, separate from? No, it's just main? my driveway where my garage is. Mm -hmm. right okay, there. you have one employee that parks there yep. and an occasional client? Or is Very all of your occasional. business ex external? A lot of my business is out of state. Primer, like you said before, but you don't have a, a large client visitation Absolutely happening. Absolutely not. There. Absolutely not. And there's no regularity to them. I mean, it's not like a dentist. Mm -hmm. I have a few very brief questions, if I may. Your assistant, what yes. are his frequency and hour, or her frequency and hours, please? Um, it varies. It's um, if I get the permit, I can have up to one employee. Is that the, the ordinance? Um, I haven't had her in there except for this week um, for like a month. But you know, it's just irregular because I'm I basically do freelance design. So when I have work and I need help, then she helps me. When I don't, there's no one there but me. Some days, I'm not in there. So the only thing that distinguishes this from a home <coughs> office is the fact that there's an employee there. Correct. From what I can tell. Absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you didn't have an employee, would this be a home office? Yes. Would, would you assume that your employee, when in attendance, would be at only within the same hours you just discussed, yes. Monday through Friday, between nine and six. Okay. Uh, you state in your cover letter that uh, you occasionally meet with a client, yet on the application you indicate two vehicular trips per day, which is one customer per that's day. That's not a client, though. That's, um, that's meant for the employee, really. A vehicular trip might be a UPS man. In other words, I don't have clients two Number times a day. vehicular trips per day that the home business will generate, and you have two. That, well, that would be the most because I have an, when an employee comes, she comes in and out. Sure. And if a client came, which is very, very occasionally, that would make two. Okay, so you don't expect a client per day. Oh, no. Per oh, day. no. I haven't, one client has come there since October. Uh, the, I sat on the board when this was approved 21 months ago. Uh, has your business grown or changed? You, okay. you state that it hadn't in, tw in the past 21 months. No, yet, it hasn't. Yet, I, I want more space in that small space that I had inside the house for storage. My business, I, I've downsized completely to just this one person. But you, so your business hasn't grown any, but you need more space for? I need more space because 224 square feet of space is really <coughs> tiny. It was like a little guest bedroom is where I was working. And a lot of the things I do are, you know, artwork. And uh, it was just very, it's very crowded to do that. And I had kept an office also down in downtown to store stuff. So now I can put it all in my 800 square feet. And the last question I have, the, the cupola on top, is that accessible by stairway or do you anticipate it ever to be? I'm asking this for a privacy oh. standpoint. No, it's um, actually- In view of the privacy question the that was raised that. earlier, is it accessible or do you anticipate ever putting a stairway up to the cupola for observation purposes? No, no, and it's, I believe it's against code to do so. Sorry? I believe it's against building code to do so. Height, you mean? No, we have no plans to do that. It's strictly to let in the light. It's like an artist's studio, like a watercolor artist. I, mean, I understand. You see many cupolas on houses that are yeah. no, double as an observation it. post also, especially it's, in a near shoreline area. Right, no. It's all open. It's just open. It's just to let the real light in. There's no floor or anything And it's architectural. Thank you. Okay, well, let's go through the uh, findings of fact um, and vote on each one separately. 
Uh, first, can we have a finding, a, a showing of hands of all those members of the board who find that the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. That is found in the affirmative seven in favor, zero opposed. Uh, next, a show of hands of those members of the board who find that the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. And that is found in the affirmative seven in favor, zero opposed. The show of hands of those board members who find that the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. And that is um, six in favor, opposed. Six in favor, one opposed. Um, a show of hands of those who find that the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. Opposed? And that is found in the affirmative, six in favor, one opposed. And there's two. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, five in favor, two opposed, thank you. Um, a show of hands of those who find that the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design appearance or architecture. Opposed? None. And that is found in the affirmative, seven in favor, Zero. Um, in light of the findings, um, would somebody be willing to make a motion to approve the application of Leslie Evans, or is this a joint application of Leslie Evans and Ronnie Sellers? Which is this? It's both. Not joint. Um, a motion to approve the application of uh, Leslie Evans, 133 Two Lights Road, tax map U41, lot 5, for a conditional use permit to relocate an existing home business from the, from the main home structure as previously uh, approved by the board on April 24, 2001, to the attached structure to the uh, upstairs portion of the attached structure built in accordance with permit number 020639 uh, with the condition that there be uh, no signage permitted on the exterior of the structure uh, advertising the business. So moved. Motion, Mr. Keneally. Second, Mr. LaPlante. Discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion is approved. Six in favor, one opposed. One thing I didn't add to the motion that maybe we can add by a supplemental motion to make it clear, um, we supplement the motion to say that the approval uh, that we've just granted is intended to supersede um, the previous conditional use approval granted on April 24, 2001. That was supposed to have been in one, as one of the conditions of approval. So you can just add it to that, can't you? 
<coughs> That's what I had written anyways when we had that discussion. Um, we can't. I don't think I stated that as part of the motion, though. No. So to the extent that we just no. approved a motion, we didn't include that as a condition. Um, so can we um, supplement the motion by adding, as a con adding that as an, an additional condition of approval um, that the approval supersede the previous conditional use approval granted on April 24, 2001? So moved. Um, okay, the motion uh, by Mr. LaPlante, uh, second, uh, Mr. Keneally. Um, all those in favor of the motion opposed. It's approved, seven in favor, zero opposed. And that concludes our new business for the evening, which takes us to the next item on the agenda, communications. I'm all set. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in Second. favor? We are adjourned. <laughs>